Good morning, everyone. Uh, thanks for joining us today um, for this KFinder program open brief. My name is Tatenda Kitsungo, and I'm the Commissioned Activities Coordinator at uh, CHN. I will start uh, with the acknowledgement of country. We would like to acknowledge the traditional custodians of the land on which we meet today, the Nanao people, and pay our respect to elders past, present, and future. And I would like to extend this acknowledgement to all the other countries that you are joining me today. So today we are going to uh, go through the uh, Care Finder program, uh, just an overview of what the program is and um, what it is uh, that it is going to uh, deliver. Um, I will go through the program overview, uh, key priority areas, uh, responsibilities of uh, the care finder organizations, eligibility criteria, commis commissioning and procurement timeline, conflict of interest and questions. Uh, at the end, uh, we will have um, a time for questions. I might not be able to answer every questions that you have, but we'll take note of every question and uh, we plan to um, do a question and answer a sheet that we'll send to everyone. Uh, if you also have questions uh, along the lines, just um, type them in the chat box and then we'll address those later. I would also like to um, stop sharing my video. Uh, you might forgive me today because uh, of my huskiness in voice. I've got um, a, bug, a flu bug that is floating around. So uh, if you hear me coughing and stuff like that, uh, that's the case. So in the key priority areas, um, uh, some, some people find um, the aged care system difficult to navigate. It's part of the Connecting Senior Australians to Aged Care Services uh, 2021. A care finder program will be introduced from 1 January 2023. The program uh, forms part of a significant investment in aged care reform in, respond, in response to the recommendations of the Royal Commission. Uh, there have been long-standing calls for more localized face-to-face -face support to help people to navigate and access aged care. So the program objectives. Um, in program objective, uh, we are looking at um, a care finder is a program that will improve coordination of support uh, for people when they are seeking uh, aged care. Uh, it will improve the integration between the health aged care and other services at a local level. It will increase the rates of staying connected to the services uh, people need post service commencement. Uh, it will increase the rate of access to aged care services. It will also increase uh, care finder workforce capability to meet client needs. Uh, it will improve openness to engage with uh, aged care system. Uh, it will improve understanding of aged care services and how to access them. So in the responsibilities of uh, care finder services providers, uh, this will include um, uh, assertive outreach. So uh, specific, uh, specifically for targeted uh, people who have one or more reasons to require intensive support to interact with my aged care, either through website, contact center, or face-to-face -face, uh, in service Australia services centers uh, to access aged care services and access other relevant support in the community. Uh, the uh, care finder will employ uh, aged care finders or aged care navigators uh, with relevant qualifications such as social work, human services, aged care, community services, or health, or relevant experience, uh, whose primary function will uh, be uh, assertive outreach, as I mentioned, uh, to support, uh, to explain and guide people through the assessment process. Uh, it will also uh, support to explain and guide people, uh, including appropriate attending, the appropriateness of attending the uh, assessments. Uh, support to help people to find aged care supports and services they need to connect with other relevant support uh, in the community. Uh, it will also 
uh, include high level check-ins with clients on a periodic basis. Um, next slide. So who will be eligible for this service? People who are eligible uh, to receive support under this initiative include um, people who are eligible for aged care services, for example, uh, ACT residents uh, aged 65 and over, the Aboriginal Torres Strait Islander people aged 45 and over, uh, in some cases, um, older persons in the ACT community. Um, any, any further details regarding service eligibility will be communicated via relevant channels as we move with this project. Uh, there is likely to be a significant crossover between people who are within the targeted population for care finder and the special needs groups under the Aged Care Act 1997. However, not everyone from a special needs group will be supported by a care finder. Uh, not everyone who is supported by a care finder will be, will be from one of the special needs group. Uh, so conflict of interest. In uh, conflict of interest um, is more likely to arise when an aged care service provider is also a, a care finder. Uh, CHN will work with um, service, provi service providers uh, with a strong focus on ensuring conflict of interest is well managed. Uh, further information regarding um, conflict of interest uh, can be found on section 10 of the care finder policy guide that will explain further around um, uh, issues that, uh, to, that are to do with the conflict of interest. Commissioning. So the providers of care finder programs uh, from 1 January 2023 will include uh, the four existing uh, assisting with care housing providers. Uh, namely, Warden Community Services, Community One, uh, Uniting Northside Community Services. Um, CHN uh, plans to commission additional care finder providers uh, on top of these four existing providers. So, in order for us to uh, commission additional um, providers for the care finder program, uh, CHN will undertake um, a supplementary needs assessment, uh, which will uh, focus on um, understanding the, uh, the local needs in relation to care finder support. We will also do a core design and stakeholder consultation to complement the needs assessment to get the voice of uh, the consumers and, and sector stakeholders into design of the services. Um, so once uh, service providers are onboarded, uh, all care finders, uh, their managers and triage staff will be required to complete a mandatory online induction training, regardless of uh, prior training or experience. Uh, the induction training package uh, developed by the department will cover key foundational information for care finder roles uh, and competencies. Uh, Client-facing staff will also be required to have completed a training in cultural and trauma-informed care. Service delivery commencement. So it is expected that uh, from 1 January 2023, organization providing uh, uh, similar services, uh, such as assisting with care housing uh, and um, uh, the care navigation program that was run by quarter, if they are uh, contracted, are expected to start uh, service delivery on the 1st of January. Uh, but uh, apart from that, all care finder organization will uh, be expected to be fully operational in delivering services by the 30th of uh, April, 2023. So, Looking at the commissioning and uh, procurement timeline, um, so starting with this open brief, brief that we are holding today, um, followed by uh, in August, we will conduct a core design and um, continue with our supplementary needs assessment, which we have already commenced. Uh, we will uh, go to the market after the core design and supplementary needs assessment 
Uh, this is because uh, the uh, procurement approach, our procurement approach will be informed by the core design and supplementary needs assessment process. So that's where we will uh, get an idea of who we are supposed to, uh, pro uh, to contract for this uh, care finder program, uh, who will be suitable to provide this service based on uh, our findings of the core design and supplementary needs assessment. Uh, after that, we'll go into September uh, where we'll uh, identify additional care finder providers apart from the four that uh, will uh, transition to care finder, which, which are the ACH providers. Uh, in October, uh, that will be a contract design process, including uh, setting of KPIs and expectations. Um, and then um, we will hold pre-contract um, uh, execution meetings with uh, service providers. This is uh, to make sure that um, uh, both uh, CHN and service providers uh, understand uh, the expectations of this program. And then uh, in November, December, uh, we will do the post-contract execution meeting. Uh, that will uh, pretty much be setting the scene for a, a service delivery commencement, which will be uh, between January and April 2023, um, moving forward. Uh, so that's the timeline for that. Uh, that moves us to the last of our slide, which is uh, questions. Uh, if there is any questions that you might have, uh, please feel free to put it in the chat or you can ask now and I can take note of it and then uh, we will get back to you with the appropriate responses. I will read the questions in the question box. Uh, there's a question from uh, Ken Rose. Uh, are prematurely aged persons under MAC eligible for support under Care Finder program? 45 plus for First Nation and 50 plus for the non Aboriginal uh, Torres Strait Islander people. Uh, we will get back to, to you on, on this, uh, Ken, uh, in our question and answer section about eligibility. There is um, still areas that are being worked out around. Um, uh, who uh, could be eligible for the service. Uh, I'll move on to Beth's, Beth Worker's question. How many new providers are you planning to bring on? So uh, this is based on, um, uh, this, will, this decision will be um, made uh, after we have conducted the core design and, and needs, uh, supplementary needs assessment that will inform us on uh, how, how many additional care finders we will need uh, on top of the, the four existing uh, ACH providers. Uh, I move on to the question from Joe Dodds. Uh, how will additional care finder providers be identified in September? Is there a process to put our organization forward? Uh, the, as I explained before, the additional care finder providers uh, are going to be, uh, we are going to ac assess the approach to market based on our findings of the supplementary needs assessment and core design process. So once we do this uh, core design process in the supplementary needs assessment, we will be informed on uh, what characteristics of the organizations that we are looking for to provide care finders uh, or, or, uh, program. There is also a question from uh, Michael Barris. Um, hi there, Michael Barris, COO of Anecto, sorry, I joined a bit late. Are community aged care service providers eligible for delivery of this program? Or is this a conflict of interest which could be managed? Um, if, if uh, thanks for your question, Michael. If, if you look at our um, um, care finder policy guidance document, uh, that, that is a very uh, comprehensive document that has been uh, uh, put together by uh, the department. Uh, this document outlines areas to do with conflict of interest. We, uh, we will provide a 
contracts to organizations that will provide this uh, care finder program based on the needs of the Canberra community. Uh, where conflict of interest arise, there are steps that can be taken to manage uh, such a conflict of interest, uh, which is outlined in the section 10 of the care finder policy guidance. So uh, the care finder policy guidance is a document that probably could give everyone a good uh, understanding and background of the care finder program. Um, I'll move on to a question from Linda Campbell. What will happen to the current ACH <coughs> clients receiving holding scholar funding and support? Uh, thanks for your question, Linda. Uh, well, I will get back to you with, uh, with this question uh, on our question and answer uh, uh, sheet. Um, Philippa Moss. Uh, will will you be commissioning for court groups like LGBTQI plus, uh, code and Aboriginal? Thanks for your question, Philippa. Um, this um, this care finder program is targeted for uh, uh, mainly for people who are um, identified as being vulnerable or coming from a vulnerable population group and. Um, my understanding is that LGBTQI plus and the COWD and the Aboriginal people are part of the vulnerable populations. Uh, there could be other uh, factors to consider as well in terms of COWD, uh, whether uh, this person could need uh, interpretation, interpretation services, uh, there could be language barriers. Uh, so it's pretty much looking at those people who cannot uh, <coughs> access aged care services by themselves and they need someone else to help them do the same. Uh, it could be for those people who have had um, previous uh, uh, bad experiences with the, with the sector, with the aged care sector, and they are hesitant to, to access the service. It could have been around uh, discrimination, racism, any, anything or, or even abuse. Uh, so they are quite hesitant to access these services. And uh, we would need people who uh, understand this uh, cohort to be able to provide support uh, to people moving forward. Uh, I will also include this uh, a bit, bit more further explanation in the question and answer uh, sheets that we'll be pro producing as well. Uh, we have another question from an anonymous attendee. How, how many providers are you expecting to contract? Um, this question has been asked before. Uh, we will look at, um, at the nature of uh, the needs of a city community uh, before we make a decision on, on how many. It could be one, two, three, four. We, this is going to be informed by the uh, process that we're going to undertake around uh, core design and supplementary needs assessment. Um, Question from uh, Sylvia Wan. Uh, can you please clarify the eligibility for people in res residential care? Uh, understanding was that they are not eligible. So thanks, Sylvia. Um, I will flesh this out in the question and answer sheet that will distribute to everyone. Uh, there seem to be a bit of a gray area around eligibility, eligibility criteria. And uh, we will also work with the department to make sure that uh, such uh, information is well clarified uh, before we move on to the procurement process. We have a question from Jamie Fallingham. Fallingham, sorry if I pronounced this wrong. Um, how do you see the Care Finder program working in its design? Um, we could respond to this in our um, uh, question and answer. Uh, what is the funding bucket? Uh, again, on the question from Lisa, we will uh, respond to this uh, in our question and answer uh, information sheet. Um, we have another question from the anonymous, who is involved in the core design process? How will you understand the demand and need of care finder services? So uh, just, um, just in, in, in short, uh, we are going to involve uh, those organizations that are uh, already delivering uh, ACH 
program uh, in our um, core design and supplementary needs assessment process. Uh, we will also involve the quarter and, uh, and its partners that were delivering the uh, system navigation program. Uh, we will also be uh, contacting several organizations within a city that uh, deal closely with uh, vulnerable populations, uh, such as uh, those that deal with homelessness, uh, those that deal with uh, people exiting jails, for example. Uh, so we will look at uh, uh, different uh, areas within a city where we are most likely to find people who need uh, extra support to access aged care services. We will also uh, flesh this out in our question and answer uh, sheet to make sure that it's, it's, it's well outlined. Um, we have a question from uh, Jimmy, Jamie. Jamie Fellingham, uh, how do you apply to be a care finder? So thanks for your question, Jamie. Uh, to be a care finder, we are going to uh, decide on the approach to market, as I uh, explained before. And uh, if it's going to be an open to market, pretty much everyone is going to be a, is going to be invited to apply to be a care finder. Uh, it could be uh, another way around where, where we identify that we can select certain organization as, appro as, as appropriate for care finder. This is based on uh, our, um, our needs assessment, uh, supplementary needs assessment process and core design process. And uh, just to add on the uh, core design process there, um, this core design process will happen in, in, in August. We, we are hopeful that it will happen in August and uh, we will be sending some information for uh, most of the people uh, who are interested in the care finder and who have uh, knowledge of the aged care sector to be part of this. That will inform us uh, further in terms of uh, procurement and, and our approach and everything. Uh, we have another question from Sylvia. Uh, can you explain more about how the core design process will work? Uh, yes, Sylvia, thank you for your question. Uh, I, uh, we will uh, put together a, a bit more context in, in terms of uh, the core design process uh, after this um, uh, session. Give us a, a, bit, a bit of time, five, six days, we'll come up with a question and answer that will explain this process. Uh, we have a question from Sharon Alice. When it comes to core design, how will you connect with and invite services to take part? So uh, in terms of core design, uh, thanks for your question, Sharon. We will connect uh, with those partners that uh, we already know uh, are delivering uh, services that are related to care finder. Uh, it could be ACH providers, care navigators, and community sector organizations that deliver uh, services to HK uh, providers. We uh, will send uh, invitations, we will do targeted communication. We probably could do a, an, um, an open invitation to core, core design process. Uh, this, uh, this process hasn't been uh, fleshed out yet exactly. So I probably won't be in a position to give you precise information on how exactly this core design process will work, but we plan to target people who are um, providing services to HK people or who have an understanding of the care needs of our uh, ACT community. Uh, we have a question from Beth. Are there plans to extend the program to New South Wales and or other sites? Uh, thanks for your question, Beth. Uh, the Care Finder program is, um, in my understanding, is, is being rolled, rolled out across uh, the country. So uh, 31 PHNs will be participating in this. And my understanding is that in New South Wales, there is a number of uh, primary health networks uh, who will be uh, commissioning this uh, piece of work. So it could be, uh, more appropriate for, for you to find out your local uh, New South Wales um, uh, PHN and uh, uh, inquire from, from, from then. 
we will also add additional details around uh, New South Wales ACT uh, processes because we understand that there's Queanbeyan, which is quite close to ACT, and uh, there's a bit of a gray area on, on, on how those clients will cross over as well. Uh, we have a question from Na Na Nadina. Can business that are not service providers be part of this program uh, that eliminates conflict of interest? Um, yes, Nadina, thanks for your question. Uh, uh, the, there is no uh, straight cut uh, answer to this. Uh, yes, service uh, providers who are uh, not current service providers of aged care people can be part of this. And even those who are uh, providers of aged care services can also be part of this. Uh, what we are saying is, if a provider is a, is if a care finder provider is also a service provider, there is a bit more uh, processes that we need to follow to make sure that a uh, conflict of inter interest is not at play. Uh, and uh, uh, further information about this could uh, be found in uh, the section 10 of the care finder policy guidance. Uh, and we will uh, add more details in our question and answer uh, sheet. We have another question from an anonymous. Uh, how will the ATM be advertised? Uh, the procurement timeline suggests the approach to market will be open from August. How long is it likely that the approach, approach to market will be open for? Uh, thank you. Uh, we will uh, get back to you on this question. Um, we have another question from Jami. Uh, how were the other providers chosen? Was it a tender process? Um, thank you for your question, Jami. Uh, the ACH providers that are already existing were already providing uh, services uh, previously, uh, which was uh, contracted by the Department of Health. So these providers uh, already flew uh, flow to us as, as, um, as care finders uh, with instruction from the Department of Health that we should contract them as, uh, as care finders moving forward. Uh, information on how that was chosen, I, I do not have with me right now, uh, but I'm happy to follow up and get back to you in the question and answer sheet that we'll distribute. Uh, I've got a question from uh, Megan. How do we register to receive the invitation to apply as an ACH provider? This information will be made available uh, in, in future uh, once we have decided our approach to market. Megan, thank you. Um, we have the last question here. Uh, how will you go about the core design process? Will it include people who have utilized navigator process and organizations who have delivered them? How will you meet the diverse needs of eligible people? Or is it just those organizations providing information data that you consider? Thank you, uh, Anonymous, for your question. Uh, this question has been discussed in, in, in this open brief. Uh, uh, we look. We will look at uh, organizations that were part of the trial, uh, the navigation trial with the quarter, and quarter itself. Uh, and, and 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 we also look at the ACH providers. We will also uh, do consultation with other uh, community services within uh, uh, ACT who have knowledge. Uh, of the aged care sector and uh, the gaps that exist within our um, uh, region. And uh, we will make decision uh, from such. Uh, we also plan to uh, consult the, the consumers uh, to hear what they need in, in terms of um, the, the services uh, and uh, what could be best for, for them. So this process will be uh, including almost every everyone within a, a city who uh, could be engaged. And please, if you feel that uh, you 
can be uh, of uh, uh, value to us and provide us with the uh, information uh, in terms of uh, the care finder. We would like to hear from you. Please uh, email us on carefinder at uh, chnact.org.au. Uh, we are happy to answer your questions. Uh, just give us time because we have quite a number of uh, questions that might uh, flow in from today. Uh, give us time to respond to you, but uh, we would like to hear uh, from several organizations within a city about what could best suit uh, this, this program. Uh, we are happy to organize meetings and uh, uh, discuss uh, what would be the best for, for the care finder and for the aged care sector within the region. Uh, our understanding is that um, uh, the HK sector is is uh, is is complex, and uh, uh, care finders will uh, assist those people who cannot uh, do it themselves uh, to access uh, services that they might need in the community. Um, any further questions? Uh, there is, uh, what are the expected volumes of people expected to engage with CareFinder in a city? Uh, thank you, Anonymous. We don't have answer to this uh, at the moment. Uh, this will probably be understood better once we have uh, conducted our um, core design process and um, our needs assessment, our supplemental needs assessment process. Um, can you... Looks like there's someone typing. Um, I will um, wait for that and probably we'll close off after. Um, there is Glenn Comek. Um, it is expected care finder services could be deliv delivered virtually. Is it expected care finder services could be delivered virtually? Hi, Glenn, thank you for your question. Uh, look, a care finder is probably going to be delivered uh, in a, in a multimodal uh, uh, processes, uh, but um, the, the the most uh, appropriate would be face to face, uh, due to certain barriers that could uh, be arising from uh, the use of technology with the HK people. Uh, but um, there are certain circumstances where uh, the use of uh, virtual uh, or telephone or other channels is appropriate uh, based on the needs of the client and uh, also uh, based on, um, it could be because of uh, COVID, uh, it could be because of uh, not being able to meet face-to-face -face with the person. Uh, there are certain uh, circumstances where also care finder service can be provided via telephone where by uh, a, a care finder is, is checking in with the clients to see everything is, is, is okay and is to what they uh, have um, expected. So there is exceptions and um, uh, areas to consider uh, in this. There's no uh, one size fit all for, for this process. Thank you, Glenn, for that question. Um, another question from the anonymous. Will conversation take place with existing ACH providers as, as to how the funding looks? If so, when will this take place? Thank you, anonymous. Uh, we are in the process of um, uh, getting in touch and communicating with ACH providers. We had meetings with some of them already, and we are yet to have meetings with uh, uh, other ACH providers we haven't had communications with yet. Uh, so we, we will be discussing this uh, directly with the ACH providers uh, around the uh, funding allocations and, and, and what that looks like. Um, Kathy Stoffel, uh, could you please repeat the email contact address? Thank you, Kath. Um, the email contact address is carefinder at chnact.org.au. Uh, if you can check on the chat, uh, chat function, there is a, the email has been put there. You can copy it and paste it. Uh, that is the last of our questions, I presume. Uh, any further questions, please don't hesitate to uh, contact us and, um, and um, uh, we will endeavor to get back to you as, as, as soon as we can. 
and uh, we look forward to to work with uh, everyone. Uh, to my understanding, this care finder uh, program has got so many moving parts, and uh, we really need to work with the community and 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 uh, our every stakeholder to make sure that this care finder is this care finder program is a success. Uh, Thank you so much for joining us today and um, uh, sparing your time to, to hear about CareFinder. Uh, we look forward to be working with you, to, working with, uh, to be working with everyone, every stakeholder that uh, could be a part of, of this CareFinder, probably not directly, not directly, but indirectly in terms of uh, being referred to by the CareFinders and uh, also referring uh, to CareFinders. So uh, thank you. Uh, thank you for, for coming and joining us. Uh, we shall talk soon.